table. Um, good afternoon. Thank you all. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm honored to be invited to present to you. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to speak very briefly about uh, obstacles to improved patient throughput in facilities. Um, one of the challenges that we have is that the technology has advanced so rapidly um, in terms of faster scanning times that many times we find that our facilities, our hospitals, really can't keep pace with what the, the newest and best scanners are capable of. Um, just a quick note about me. Um, I am trained as an architect. Um, I sit on a number of committees that help develop the physical environment standards for imaging, nuclear medicine, radiation therapy uh, facilities in the United States. Um, and pretty much my entire professional career has been focused on medical imaging and medical therapy device planning and design. Um, over the next 20 minutes, uh, we will uh, ask and answer sort of three questions or address three dilemmas. Uh, one of them is, if scanners keep getting faster, why do we not see an increase in the number of patients that we can scan in a week, in a month, in a year? Um, how do we strike a balance between image quality and scan time? Um, and what are the key elements that may have been overlooked in terms of our facilities that would greatly improve the potential for um, greater patient throughput, more studies? So the first of these is the question. Um, if scanners keep getting faster and faster, why am I not scanning more patients this year than last year? Um, your scanner is a supercar. Um, you invest millions of dollars in a brand new scanner that has amazing capabilities. Um, and we see this all the time. We see promises of cardiac CTs in five minutes. Uh, we see the promise of MRI studies in 20 minutes. And yet, in many facilities, even if you buy this scanner that promises the super fast CTs, the super fast MRs, at our facility, we just can't seem to get anywhere close to the productivity um, that we were promised for this scan. The challenge is that it's not simply the scanner that determines your capacity or your throughput. Um, if your scanner is a supercar, but your hospital is a giant speed bump, um, then the supercar does not perform to your expectations. It is a marriage of the equipment and then the environment in which we deliver care. Um, you can do one extremely well, but if the other one doesn't live up to uh, the expectations, um, the entire system is compromised. Image quality, or the number of images in scan time. Um, in the United States, we see this recur over and over. Uh, we see uh, a highway that is just congested with automobiles. And so they decide, oh, we will add additional lanes to the highway. We'll add more capacity. Um, and that will solve the congestion problem. And it does solve the congestion problem for the first two, three months after the new lanes are added and opened up. But then everybody sees, oh, that freeway just got faster. The people who used to choose other routes now all of a sudden drive on that freeway again. And so before long, we have freeways that are, you know, dozens of lanes wide and packed with automobiles uh, nonstop. Uh, we replicate this model in imaging. We add capacity. We add technology that makes scans faster, improves image quality. Um, and yet, we don't necessarily think strategically about how we are going to deploy those additional resources. What is the greatest possible advantage out of new equipment, new technology that we can use? Where is the greatest value to us as a healthcare provider? When you have additional capacity, new machines, faster machines, more capability, you are confronted with a set of three possible applications of that new technology. We can either use that technology to acquire the same images, the same number, the same quality, only do it much faster. 
we can improve the resolution and make the same images that we have been collecting more attractive, or we can collect more images. Um, if a study had previously, a CT, we had previously done the study with four slices, now maybe we do the same study but we change the protocol, we do six slices or eight slices. If you ask radiologists, if given new capabilities, new capacity, um, generally speaking, they will choose one of the two options in the bottom corners of this triangle. If you ask administrators, they will typically choose the option at the top of the triangle. Uh, so before you deploy new imaging technology, ask yourself, where is the greatest value to our facility in terms of the advantage of this new technology? Is it higher quality images? Is it a greater number of images of the same quality? Or is it faster acquisition and reduced total scan times? Because only the last of those, the one that's on the top of this particular triangle, is the one that will allow you to capitalize new imaging technology to the benefit of reducing scan times. I don't mean to suggest that improved image quality or improved number of images per study are not advantages, they clearly are. It's just a question of what gets the greatest benefit. Each of them presents a benefit, and you have to choose when it comes time to deploying new technology, where in this triangle you wish to be. You can focus exclusively, you can dedicate all of the new technology towards higher resolution, more attractive images, uh, or you can try and strike a balance where you get some combination of, of these advantages based on how you deploy new technology. One of the things that is not presented when you're looking for new imaging equipment is the degree to which your physical facilities, the bricks and mortar of your radiology department, affect significantly imaging throughput. Uh, if, if you got that scanner that promises you five minute cardiac CTs, if your facility is not capable of running 12 patients an hour through that CT scanner, then that five minutes per cardiac CT gets you no advantage or less advantage. Uh, so one of the things that I would propose to you is that the support spaces associated with imaging um, are one of the fundamental stumbling blocks. They are that speed bump to your maximizing throughput, maximizing efficiency. Uh, to that end, one of the substantial changes in the way that we use imaging clinically today from say 10 years ago is the amount of intervention and the level of patient acuity that radiology services support. Uh, I sit on the group that writes this uh, design standard. This is the FGI Facilities Guidelines Institute. Um, and this standard uh, essentially describes the planning and design of facilities throughout the hospital. And I sat on the committee that wrote the imaging section of this. And we identified that radiology has changed so much that we created a classification system based on the amount of intervention um, and the level of patient acuity. 10 years ago, the typical MRI patient they walked into the room, hopped up on the table, we slid them in, we scanned their knee. After the study, they hopped up and walked out. While that may still be the typical patient, today we're also doing MRI for stroke assessments. Patients who are altered coming in for evaluation about TPA. Um, we're doing cord compressions. We're doing image-guided biopsies. So the level of patient acuity and the level of intervention concurrent with the exam has changed dramatically. As we define the classification, the level of intervention, the level of patient acuity, it changes the necessary spaces that we should provide to maximize the capacity for that level of care. Examples of the support spaces that I believe are frequently overlooked um, include dedicated change areas, an IV start area for contrast enhanced exams, so we're not starting the contrast injection in the room. 
and the two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes that that may take um, from potential additional studies, uh, lockers for patient belongings, patient toilets inside the imaging area, uh, medication storage and preparation areas, holding bays in hospitals for non-ambulatory inpatients, high acuity patients with associated infrastructure for medical gases. Uh, if we're doing sedation or anesthesia in the imaging area, dedicated areas for induction or recovery um, or code response. Uh, storage for stretcher and wheelchairs. If we don't account for the things that get brought to imaging and get left there, um, then those stretchers or trolleys or wheelchairs wind up taking space away from the other functions that we need to effectively and efficiently run uh, those spaces. As an example, uh, this is uh, an MRI suite with two MRI rooms. Um, and the MRI rooms, you see, they sort of go off the page. You actually wind up with very nearly uh, the same amount of area, square meters, associated to the support spaces that are in the colors other than blue. And the blue colors are really the spaces that we typically associate with an MRI suite, the um, radiologist control desk, the scanning room and the system component room. Um, but if you look at the support facilities that are appropriate to an effective and efficient uh, MRI suite, as I say, it's nearly the same amount of space as the scanner rooms themselves. And this is the recipe in terms of space allocation and resources that will help you maximize the performance. This is a, an MRI example, uh, but there are similar examples for CT or in nuclear medicine for PET. Uh, that help describe an appropriate allocation of these resources to maximize um, patient throughput and also to provide spaces that are appropriate to the level of care when we're doing high acuity patients or interventional care inside of the um, imaging areas. I do not suggest from this attempt to focus attention on the support spaces and the bricks and mortar of your facility, I do not mean to suggest that you should continue to pursue the most advanced imaging technology that you can. By all means, continue to do that. Uh, but do not look to the GEs, the Philipses, the Siemenses of, of the world and their products in terms of their hardware as being the only solution for uh, throughput-related concerns. Similarly, um, I would point you to a resource that we hope will be coming out in the very near future. Um, it's a publication uh, that we're working on right now for the U.S. government. Um, it's called the Imaging Services Dur uh, Design Guide. Um, we hope that it will be out December or the very first part of next year. Uh, that will include information about a number of the, the ratios and assignments for the support spaces. Um, it's, it is based on U.S. practice, um, and so ultimately I would hope that the MOH uh, would develop a Saudi-specific uh, version of this tool. Um, but uh, for those of you who are interested, if you wish to give me your contact information, um, we can let you know as soon as this resource is available because it is a U.S. government resource. It's funded by U.S. taxpayers. It's made freely available once it's published. You need to know. With that, I, that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> so my timing has worked out well. Again, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Um, if any of you, as I say, you are welcome to contact me if you want to capture my contact information. Uh, thank you very much for this nice presentation.